Ready? We want to evaluate these um, Riemann sums, yes, to uh, calculate that integral. So, so fortunately, we have a game plan. First, we're going to calculate delta x. That's b minus a over n. Then, we're going to find um, xi, which is your general x. <laughs> a plus i delta x. And then, we're going to evaluate f of xi. After we find that, we're going to stick it into our original function. And why are we doing it into pieces? It's going to chunk it. And when we chunk it, we make it easier on us. Making it, making it easy. Easy on you. And then, we're going to be using our limit laws to simplify. We want to run the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation i equals 1 to n of what we found here times what we found here. Yes. And then after that, we're going to use some sums, those laws, the i's, and finish him. The first thing we need to do is step one. I need to find my delta x. That's going to be my b minus my a divided by n. Here my b is my upper limit, and my a is my lower limit, and my n is n, man. So then, this is b, 4, minus 1, divided by n, which is going to get me 3 over n. Step 2. We need to find our xi. Yes, we can reason it out by finding a few different x's. We can find x0, which is my lower limit, then x1, which is the lower limit, plus this guy, and then x2, which is my lower limit, plus twice this guy. But I'm just going to go and say that this is 1 plus, wait for it, 3 over ni. That's my xi. Now I want to evaluate my f, because we're chunking this. 3. I want f of xi. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? That's going to be everywhere I see an x up there, I'm going to put this guy. So then I have 1 plus 3 over n squared i. And then minus 4 times 1 plus 3 over n i plus 2. Finish him. Clean that up. Yeah. So then, this is going to be a uh, 1 plus, this one times that one, double it. That's a 6 over ni plus that one squared. So using a perfect square. So this is 9 divided by n squared i squared. Now, let's take care of that 4. So then that's right here. This is minus 4 minus 12 over ni plus 2. Oh, that constant out there. Gather, collect, and combine. And we'll find that this is going to be 9n squared i squared. Gather my i's. There's 12 plus 6. This is minus 6 over n i. And then let's gather our constants. This is 1. Minus 4 is a minus 3. Plus 2 is a minus 1. And what was that? That was my f of xi. Let's go plug it all into this guy. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take it right there. So now I'm looking for the limit as n goes to infinity of what? This blue sum, i equals 1 to n of my f of xi. And that's going to be this guy. Mm-hmm. 9 over n squared i squared minus 6 over n i minus 1. Fun. Then I need to take that and I need to multiply it by my delta x. And let's do that now. So then I need to multiply this entire thing by my delta x, which was 3 over i. Let's 3 over n. Get all ex okay, here we go. Finish him. So then, let's distribute that in there so that we don't forget about it. So this will be the limit as n goes to infinity. Blue sum i equals 1 to n of, and it goes and it goes. 9 times 3 is 
27 over n to the third i squared. Minus 3 times 6 is 18 over n squared i. And then this is minus 3 over n. Finish him. I will. Over here. So then, now I'm looking at, ooh, why well, don't I use my limit properties? Step three, to simplify this guy. All of these are gonna be constants. This index is only working on i, so I can pull this all out. So now I'll be looking at the mm, limit as n goes to infinity of 27 divided by n to the third times this blue sum, i equals one to n of i squared. i, 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 dana, dana, minus, because of that one. The limit as n goes to infinity of this blue sum. I'm passing my sum in, because the sum of the sums is the sum of the sums. And then you can pass your constants out to n, yes, of what? Oh, forgot to get my constant out. Come on, constant. I, and I'm passing that constant out too. Don't mind me if I step a skip. 18 over n squared minus the limit as n goes to infinity of, wait for it, pass that out, 3 over n times this sum, this blue sum. It's kind of gruesome. I equals 1 to n of 1. Because there's just nothing left inside. Now we need to use some, some properties. And now we're to the part where we need some sums. We have the sum of the first n i terms. That's going to be n times n plus 1 over 2. And then we have the sum of i squared from 1 to n. That's going to be n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And then this last sum, the sum of i cubed, or a number, an index cubed. It's i from 1 to n of n times n plus 1 over 2, all of that squared. Okay, let's go ahead and let's stick those guys in there. This is going to be the limit. It's a habit, like stunting. Of n over, or n to infinity of 27 divided by n to the third times my i squared. i, i, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Alrighty then, minus the limit as n goes to infinity of 18, didn't forget you this time, boy, over n squared. And then my i, that's also going to use some i or some some properties. So then the, some some properties, that's going to be n times n plus 1 over 2. And then this is going to be minus three. I guess I should still put the limit even. The limit as n goes to infinity of three over n. Wait, what is the sum from one to n of one? Well, let's see. That means I'm going to add one up n times, which is going to be n. Then, if I, uh, uh, oh, and you're just going to be left with three. And they fight, uh, uh, and that's going to be a nine. And then they fight, the two fights the six. Oh, can you do that? No, but after you run the limit, it'll be okay. Oh, three, then the three, oh, oh, nine. Whoa, this step right here, don't ever let your instructor see you do this. But after you run the limit, you multiply all that out, and then you get them in separate terms, and then you run the limit on those guys, it's gonna work out. Why? Because the only one that's going to matter is the leading term. That's one, two, third degree polynomial. And then this is two times 27, which is like big, 54 or something like that, divided by a six. And that's how we get our nine. 
Anyway, work the limits on yours. When I say yours, I mean time. Ready, 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 ready. So this is nine minus nine minus three. And your answer is minus three? Why? Let's look at that. It is a parabola. If I was to put it in standard form, half the middle coefficient is 2. So then this f of x is going to be x minus 2 squared. Half the middle coefficient squared added and subtracted. So then I need to subtract 2 subtract 4, and I get a minus 2? I think that's it in standard form. What is that? That's a parabola shifted right 2, down 2, shifted right 1, 2, down 1, 2, right there. And then it opens up 1 to 1, or up 1, over 1, bam! By symmetry, another one there, bam! And what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the area. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four. The area of what? Of this guy. And that's why it was negative.